Welcome to our salt series on sous vide cooking and how to use salt correctly. This is what we're going to make today, y'all. We are going to make a steak you can cut with a butter knife. How cool is that? It's like the best steak ever. And you guys are going to know how to do that after the day. So that's very exciting. Oh, I could go for some of that right now. We're going to do shrimp too. Hello and welcome, Chef Pennington here in Austin, Texas, where we bring flavor to the table, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Today, we are gonna be using salt. We're in our salt series, and we're gonna do sous vide. Sous vide is one of these cool little devices. It goes in a water tub, so you have water, you stick this in there, you set it to the temperature you want, and it brings the water to the perfect temperature, and the beauty of it is it can't go over that temperature, so you can't overcook your food. If y'all are having a party, which the Christmas season's right around the corner, sous vide is a wonderful way to make a lot of things that are going to be cooked to perfection and you have that window of when it's actually going to be overcooked if you will now they can't go over temperature but something can stay at a temperature too long and the beauty of the sous vide is you've got about a 30 minute window on stuff that can hang out in that water bath and it's going to be perfect so when your guests are eating or if you're just having a party pick it right up it's going to be absolutely perfect so salt series we're going to use salt today in a cool way. We're going to answer those questions of how to use salt and sous vide, which a lot of people end up thinking that if you use the salt, it's going to cause your food to be too salty, and it absolutely can. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to figure out how to use salt the correct way. And we're going to sous vide shrimp, which that's very unusual for a lot of people. They think about just sauteing shrimp. Well, we're going to do that, and we're going to enhance the texture. So think about it. We're going to be cooking it in a bag. It's going to have butter, all that other goodness in there and it's gonna cook it to juicy perfection. Now at that point, it's gonna be lacking a little bit of texture and that's where we're gonna fix that today with salt, which is awesome. And it's not just gonna be salt at the end, it's gonna be much cooler than that. So if this is y'all's first time visiting, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell so you know when we post new content and let's get started. Let's do it. Okay, here's a quick question. We've got kosher salt and we've got sea salt. Do y'all know which one is the healthier of the two? I've got an answer for you at the end. You might be surprised. Okay, here's a very, very cool ingredient. This is called smoked salt. It's from Chihuahua, Mexico. You can find it in, in your bulk aisle at your grocery store, possibly. If not, you can find it online. I'll put a link below if you guys are interested. It's certainly not required. It just adds a little bit of smokiness and more depth of flavor, which we like. So I'm using both salts right there. I've got the sea salt and I've got some kosher salt. Different textures. It's going to help the curing process. We're going to do a quick cure on this meat. Always try to buy the best meat y'all can find. This is USDA Prime. I live in Texas. We're pretty fortunate. We get a lot of this good stuff. USDA Prime meat is only the top 2% of all the meat that we sell, which obviously means 98% of everything else isn't. So if you can find Prime, it's worth a few extra bucks. So here's how we're going to salt our meat. We're going to put this salt all over it. And yes, it looks like a ton of salt. And we're not going to cook it like this. We're doing a quick cure. This is going to allow the meat to suck in the salt a little bit. Once it's done, it's about 20 minutes or so. You're going to rinse it off under the under some water. Don't go crazy. Just rinse it off. You know, you'll feel with your fingers. Just get the salt off. That's the key. But as it sat there and cured, what's happening is the salt is going in just on that top layer of the meat, which it's actually been sucked into the meat. If we just put a bunch of salt or normal amount of salt on the meat and we let it go into the bag and we sous vide it, which is going to be sous vide means under vacuum. We're in a bag there. We're sucking out all the air. That's the under vacuum part. If you don't have a, a food saver like that, you can put it into a plastic bag. I'll show you later in the video how that works, but food savers work pretty nice. So we salted the meat. We let it hang out for 20 minutes. We rinse it off. The salt flavor is inside of the meat at this point, which is what we want. If we just had it inside the bag, I promise you, more times than not, the salt like permeates the entire meat. It gets so far into the meat over the long cooking process, which is what sous vide is like. It's too salty. Y'all probably know you've had that happen before. We're doing the same thing with the shrimp. We're giving it the exact same salt, the, the smoked salt. We're letting it hang out for, this is about 10 minutes, 7 to 10 minutes. We're going to rinse it off. Put some delicious butter, and here you go. This is how you do it with the plastic bag. You submerge it into the water. The water wants to push all the air out. 
fold the bag back over on top of itself and the air will just push itself right out and you zip and you're good to go. Now we cook the steak at 129 degrees. That's what I personally like. That's truly medium rare. If you like it more medium plus, you're going to be about 130 degrees. And this is the fun part. We put a beautiful sear on it. So we cooked, I cooked mine for two hours and 20 minutes. For me, that's perfect at 129 degrees. You can play around with the temperatures a little bit. 129 degrees is medium rare, a true medium rare that you can cut with a butter knife. So I've got some butter in there and look what happens. We put a beautiful crust on it. It's just the perfect way to do a steak. Now you could put this on the grill, which is awesome. You can be having a party at your house. You got all the steaks sous vide and ready to go. Fires outside ready, your friends are getting hungry. You just pop it on the grill. It's amazing. It's the best way to cook a steak. Now, I like grilling a lot, but goodness gracious, it's hard to beat sous vide cooking. So let's take a look at what we got here. That piece I cut on the outside, the front part, that's the skirt on the ribeye. Easily the best part of the entire cow. It's so good. I wish we could just buy a whole bunch of that. And here we go again. Look how easy it cuts. I actually served this to a friend of mine, unfortunately doesn't have any teeth and he was able to eat it. It's that cool. This is like the steak everyone wants to talk about, except it's really happening right here. And you guys are going to know exactly how to do it after today, which is wonderful. So this is part of our salt series. I'm going to be doing really cool stuff one after another about salt and how to use it correctly in your food. So here's the tip about the salt, kosher salt, sea salt. They're the same. One's not better than the other. I know we all think sea salt's better, but I'm sorry. It's not. You want the best salt? You get Himalayan sea salt. I'll have a link below talking more about this, y'all. You take care and have the best.